Good morning. Today we'll be investigating the relationship between spring extension and force. In addition, our other task will be to calculate the spring constant for the spring seen in this picture. So here we have the spring in two different positions. Notice in one position we've added lots of weights to the spring and those weights cause the spring to extend. When the spring does not have any weight added to it, we say it's an equilibrium position. After adding weights, notice the spring is extended. And so, to measure the extension, we'll be using the ruler. So how about force? How are we going to measure the force? Well, we're going to measure the force with the weights. Every time we add a weight, we need to settle the spring. So why do we need to settle the spring? Well, notice when we add a weight, the spring begins to vibrate. We can see that here. And so by settling the spring, we stop the vibrations from taking place. Now when we settle the spring and once the vibrations have stopped, the acceleration is zero and the system is stationary. We draw the forces. The spring force points upwards and it opposes the force of gravity. When the acceleration is zero, the spring force is exactly equal to the force of gravity or the weight. So this is how we're going to measure force. We're going to measure force because we're going to know the weight that we've added. And by knowing the weight, we have the spring force. So here's our first data point. Each of those weights has a mass of 20 grams. And looking at the ruler, the extension for this first data point is 0.8 centimeters. This is the table I'd like you to complete. Please ensure that you copy the title of the table. Notice that the mass goes up in increments of 20 grams. We're going to go all the way to 160 grams. Please fill in the entire table. Here's our next data point for 40 grams. Please record the extension. 60 grams. 80 grams. Please record the extension. Notice in this image here that the spring is getting longer. It's being more extended. 100 grams. That spring is now really extending as you can see. 120 grams. That's six weights. Again, as you can see, the spring is extending more and more. This is seven weights or 140 grams. Again, Notice the spring length or extension. And finally, this is 160 grams. Please record the extension. And so how do we determine the spring force? Simply by taking the mass and multiplying by the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.81. Notice the unit is not the newton, it's the millinewton because we've left the mass in grams. And so there's the answer in significant digits, 196 millinewtons, 392 millinewtons. So this is the graph I'd like you to complete today. We're going to plot spring force on the x-axis. That's because that was the variable that we were in control of. And we're going to plot extension on the y-axis in centimeters. Let's plot on the y-axis because this is the variable that we were measuring. What are my expectations? I want a professional title. Please just don't simply write Y versus X. I want you to draw a line of best fit. I want you to calculate the slope of that line of best fit, include the units and significant digits. And then I want a sentence explaining what the slope actually means. Now to get the spring constant, that was our secondary goal today, you will calculate the run over the rise not the rise over the run. For spring constant, it'll be the run over the rise. The unit of that will be millinewtons, because that's the unit of the run, over centimeters, because that's the unit of the rise. I'd like you to convert that to newtons per meter. Newtons per meter is the traditional unit used for spring constant. 
So why do we investigate springs? Well, there are many materials and objects that behave like a spring does, such that there's a linear relationship between the extension and the force. A bow is one such object. This is the equilibrium position for the bow. And one such bow we've tested has a spring constant of 300 newtons per meter. So what does that mean? Well, if we were to take our meter stick and extend the string one meter back from its equilibrium position, we would need exactly 300 newtons. If we extended only half a meter, we would need 150 newtons. That's what that means, that spring constant, 300 newtons per meter. If you were to pull the string back two meters, you would require 600 newtons of force to do that. Hockey sticks also have a relationship that is linear between the extension and the force applied, just like a spring does. When purchasing a hockey stick, they have a flex rating. For example, the flex rating could be 85. What does that mean? Well, it means 85 pounds per inch. So what does that mean? Well, if we estimate that this stick is flexing by around 4 inches, it would mean that Phil Kessel would have to apply 340 pounds of force to cause that stick to flex 4 inches. A higher flex rating means more effort has to be put in in order to bend the stick. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.